In this video, I'm going to demonstrate uh, some techniques that I use for drawing forest land cover in rural areas where uh, there's not a whole lot else besides forest, and so often the roads can be reused to create your polygon shapes. Um, often it's not going to be quite as perfect as this. You might still have some cutout shapes um, here where there's some fields or non-forested areas, but it can still be quite useful. Um, because you have long areas uh, where the road provides a boundary to the forest. So first off, uh, I've got a couple keyboard shortcuts that will be visible here in the lower left-hand corner. So when I press A and S here, I'm swapping back and forth between Draw Mode and Select Mode. And that keyboard shortcut will show up in the lower left. And uh, I use a lot of keyboard shortcuts while using JOSM. I find that's the most efficient way. So hopefully that'll help follow what I'm doing. Uh, first off, we're going to take a look at what we need to do to set up JOSM for this workflow. We'll need expert mode enabled to start with, and that will give us access to two tools. Uh, one is the parallel mode that lets us draw a parallel way or, or easily copy a way into a parallel, and that's what we'll be using for the roads. And we'll also be using the improve way accuracy a little bit. Both of these are only available in expert mode. So to make sure you have that turned on, go to the view menu here and click expert mode. And as you can see, some more things showed up in the toolbar here. And now in the mode menu, you can see we have parallel and improve way accuracy available here. Uh, other than that, we'll need to make sure we have the utils plugin 2 installed. This gives us a few new features, but for this workflow, the add nodes at intersections is important, as well as the split object and the select way nodes here. Split object uh, does exactly what it sounds like. You can draw a line across a polygon to split it in half. And beyond that, we will also be using the built-in create multi-polygon tool and the update multi-polygon tool to do exactly that. Create the multi-polygon in the first place and then update it when we have some uh, cutouts in the middle. But that will be later in the video. So for plugins, in case you're not aware how to install them, you'll need to go to Preferences or Settings. And in the Plugins tab here, you can search for Utils. And this is the plugin that will show up. You can check this box here. And then after you've checked the box, click the Update Plugins button and that'll install it. And you'll probably need to restart JOSM after that to uh, have it take effect. So, how does the technique work? Well, let's see, we start off with the parallel way tool I mentioned before. So we're gonna switch modes to parallel uh, using Shift P is the keyboard shortcut for that. So there we are. And now we're gonna create parallel lines to these roads approximating where the edge of the forest is. So I'll just kind of drag it in a little bit for that one and the second one and then we'll pan over to take a look at this third one here. Same deal. And now we have the beginning of our polygon. First off we'll now select all three and delete any keys. That just had one highway um, tag on it but you probably have a lot more tags to need to delete. So you now have just some untagged ways. Next, we need to split them to get rid of these extra tails hanging off the edge. So first, what we'll do is select them all. And we're going to use the Add Nodes at Intersections tool, which is Shift-I. So now those nodes are selected. You can see these new red nodes that showed up here. And now we're going to split them and delete the unneeded edges. So select the node here and use the split way function here in tools, which is shortcut of P. There's also a split mode you can use in JOSM, but uh, I'll leave that out of this video to keep it simple. Now that that extra piece is separated, I can simply delete it. Repeat for the other edge here. And you'll notice something weird here. There's a couple of stop signs. And what's going on is these are leftovers that um, 
you know, came came across when I made this parallel way. It's actually one from a previous attempt here. So there would be just one uh, that was left over. Now, I'm going to delete that to make sure I don't accidentally upload a errant stop sign. But in the next uh, example here, I'll show you how to avoid that problem. So here we do a split, and this time instead of just deleting the way, we're going to use the selection menu here. There is a select way nodes option. And this is control shift N. So select the way, control shift N to select all the nodes, then select the way again. Now if I press delete, you know this is perfect because it's selected the stop sign for me. And if I press delete now, I'll also delete this node here, which I don't want to delete. So I'm going to deselect that one. And I just messed it up. So let's do that again. Control Shift N and then Control click to deselect. Select the way and we're done. In that particular example, it doesn't really make sense because it was such a short uh, way. But let me show you another one where this would be quite helpful. So split this way. And now we've got a long way. It kind of goes off the screen here. And we've got some stop signs that we don't want. These are going to be orphaned when I delete this way like that. Oops, don't want to upload those. So here it's great. I don't even have to look over there. I can, If I'm just mapping over here, I can just say, well, I don't know where that way goes, but I know I'm not going to want any of it because I just created it. So I'm going to select the way, do Control-Shift-N, unselect my one node I know I want to keep, Select the way again, press delete, and now I can be assured that any extra stop signs, or if it's a power line, they might be power poles, that kind of thing, won't be left over. And you can see that they're gone there, uh, even though I didn't really go take a look to delete them. So here's our final one. And now that's gone. So now, We've got three ways which can be combined into a polygon. And that is done with tools, combine way, or the shortcut of C. And it'll ask you if you want to reverse directions. Say yes. So now we have a closed way, which we can tag as a forest or natural wood, depending where you're mapping. And then the final thing that you may want to do here is refine it a little bit. You know, it's, it's unlikely that it's such a perfect situation here. Uh, you know, the, the woods may kind of pull away from the road at certain spots. So you might want to kind of refine things a little bit in certain spots. But usually this works pretty well if it's a heavily wooded region and the road just cuts right through it. Um, so I've just used the mode uh, W for improve way accuracy and select this W and I can use this also to kind of round these corners out a little bit because probably the forest doesn't come to such a direct point. If I hold down control I can add a couple new nodes and kind of refine this a little bit. Same over here And that's not necessary, but, you know, generally I kind of take a look at things after the fact to just make sure that I haven't, you know, it wasn't wishful thinking on my part that the road perfectly bounded the forest. So there we go. We've got a forest with very little manual drawing. So uh, what if it's a little more complicated and rather than just a simple forest as shown here that's perfectly bounded by roads, we have some fields or something non-forest that's, that's cutting in. Well, I still use this technique. I just sort of get started with this because all of these sides are already drawn for me and that's useful. And so now all I have to do is just cut out these little pieces. And I'm not doing a perfect job on the tracing here. Feel free to do a better job than me. I'm just demonstrating the technique. So once I've drawn this line, I select both ways and then I'm going to use the split object tool from the utils plugin and that's alt x so alt x here and now i've got a sep two separate objects 
Now you certainly can tag this as some other land use if you're wanting to uh, do a full complete job. I'm just going to delete it for now because I'm focused on showing you how to draw the, the forest. But when I'm mapping, I often will make that residential or a field or whatever it is. And we'll just do the last couple here. And you can see how this can be quite efficient with the keyboard shortcuts. And you can move pretty quickly once you get familiar with it. That's why I definitely recommend JOSM for this kind of mapping. It might take a little bit of a learning curve to get used to it, but once you learn the keyboard shortcuts, you can move very quickly and efficiently, and it's it's much nicer than uh, trying to do everything manually. So there we go. Now we have all our pieces cut out. So there's one final uh, situation, you know, some forests will have be even more complicated than just having some pieces cut out of them, and they'll actually have holes in the middle, like this. Um, so for that, we now have to create a multi-polygon. And some people find this a bit daunting, and you, you certainly can use the Create New Relation tool down here, and open this up, and then you can add each way and all of that. But um, there's a much simpler way by using the Create Multi-Polygon tool. So all we have to do is first draw these inner pieces. And again, not tracing super carefully here, just demonstrating the technique. So there we go. I've got one. And I select my outer way, which you can see is tagged with natural wood here. Once we've created the multi-polygon, we don't want that because the, the natural wood tag is supposed to go on the relation. So all we're going to do is use the Tools menu and Create Multi-Polygon, multi which is Control-B. And there we go. It creates one for us. So now we can see we've got a relation, a multi-polygon relation selected with a with the natural wood tag. And it would if we had tagged other things on there as well, it would copy over all the tags. And we can see that this one doesn't have any, this outer way no longer has any tags on it and is just an untagged way with roll of outer. And this one is an untagged way with a roll of inner. So Jossum automatically figures out that this is inside and creates an inner with it. And you can tell um, because of the, the highlights here on the side whether the multi polygon is formed correctly. So we have one more inner piece to make here. So I will trace that roughly again. And we can't create a new multi-polygon now because we already have one. But instead, we just need to select any way that's a member of the multi-polygon already. Select our new way. And then we use the update multi-polygon feature to add. So that's Control-Shift-B. And there we go. Now our multi-polygon has three members. And if we select relation, you can see them all right there. So that's a nice, easy way to handle multi-polygons. You can, you can draw 10 or 15 different inners and then do one update multi-polygon command, and it'll add them all in one go. Very efficient. Um, yeah, so that, that covers the whole technique. Um, obviously, as I said at the beginning, many forests won't follow the roads as perfectly as this. And in that case, I, I wouldn't bother using the parallel way tool. I would just roughly trace the forest to start. Um, but I I do like to draw a rough polygon rather than perfectly tracing it right from the beginning because when you're dealing with a really large area that's very complex, it can feel daunting to just trace every little detail from the start. So you can kind of do a rough job at the beginning and then you can use the same Alt-X split object tool and the create multi-polygon tool to progressively add the little details as you go. So um, yeah, these, these things are still useful even if the roads uh, aren't useful as an initial boundary. Uh, also sometimes maybe one boundary is, is useful to use a road for and then the other ones aren't because there's no road nearby. You could use a river as a boundary, a power line, um, all sorts of things. But just got to make sure that you do delete any orphan nodes like these stop signs. Um, so you're not uploading bad data. I believe Jossum will warn you if you do that, so not too much to worry about. But yeah, that's the technique, and uh, thanks for watching.